everybody, how's it going? So it's almost five o'clock and I'm about to make the announcement of the location of our pop-up performing arts experience happening at seven o'clock tonight. So All right, so I'm revealing the location. That's the trolley, friends. Yeah. So we're gonna have uh, you guys meet up here, right here at the trolley stop on the corner of Broadway and Park Boulevard. And you're gonna look out for a saxophone player. When you hear the saxophone, uh, start heading in that direction. So uh, it's only for the adventurous ones. It's only for the ones that are willing to take a little risk uh, for a really great payoff. Uh, it's gonna be really special and beautiful and inspirational. So if you're in need of a little inspiration, please come out and join us. It's gonna be really fun and we hope to see you there. Bye.
This ain't rap, this is rhyming poetry. The difference in my style is you gon' know it's me. Similar to flow with tree, nastier than Joe to see. I'm a church boy with devil-like tendencies. Rappers, they pretend to be harder than they need to be. Watch their mama come around, they streets turn sesame. Quit stressing me, you may win at a fight, but I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe when we measure in our lives. Got a lot of girls, but I'm in love with my wife. You don't gotta brag when you're doing it right. It's the nerd of me, I know you heard of me. Game stopping hip hop is like a drug to me. See, we be popping bottles with the family. Kids down the hall in the nursery. It's how it's supposed to be, man. Live your life well. You've got another choice besides dead or in jail. Real talk, talk real. Try on the truth, y'all. See how it feels. Real talk, God. Talk real. Try on the truth, man. See how it feels. Now there's a war going on. There's a war going on and it's beyond this song. There's a war going on. We gotta get up, get out, or get along. You see, people of color, yo, we under the gun. Media don't wanna show us under the sun. We either shot or shooting, thugging or looting. You leave it up to them, you won't believe in black students. So every chance we get, we gotta lift our people. Show them that united we are stronger than the evil. Show them that we love one another, we are regal. White, tan or brown, we can all get down. This is show not tell, this is life not death. They want our hands in the air, I say all hands on deck. The more they put us down, the more we gotta connect. We don't need their pity, we want some damn respect. Real talk, talk real. Try on the truth, man, see how I feel. Real talk, talk real. Try on your truth, brother, see how it feels. Live your truth, sister, see how it feels. Know your truth, sister, see how it feels. Shh, be the truth, y'all, see how that feels. Welcome to Street Stories, y'all. So too, I'm gonna be your host for this evening. Um, I'm gonna start out with some poems of my own and then I brought some of my super friends. You heard some of them uh, musically. You're gonna hear a lot of them. But vocally, I have two other poets that are gonna come over here and, and, and bless you with years of knowledge and experience and, and, and just talent. And we, we're here to talk about compassion and we're here to talk about tolerance and we're here to talk about community and we're here to just talk about love because in this day and age, 2018, it seems like it's seeping out of our pores but we're gonna bring it back. Yeah. With, with uh, events like this, we're bringing love back and we gotta start simple, no stage, no cameras, no, except cell phones, of course. Uh, <laughs> but just raw spirit and love and community. So let me tell you about a little bit what I think about community. You can stop the music real quick, guys. So we all know that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone and, and Thomas Edison helped to invent the electric light bulb. But what a lot of you don't know on this street corner, what you guys don't know is that when I was about five, I actually invented music. True story. <laughs> now, I may have seen some other people try, but I'm telling you, when I was five, man, you get me two pencils on a handrail or some pots and pans and a couple serving spoons, I was like Quincy Jones on them bad boys. And just so you don't get it twisted, I also invented the art of talking to, uh, liking a girl but never speaking to her, pouring way too much sugar into my bowl of plain Cheerios, and I invented the taste of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Not, not the actual sandwich, mind you, my mother has the patent on that, no. I invented how perfect it was gonna taste in my mouth. So as you can see, I am a man of great accomplishments. Still, there's a lot of times at night, I still feel like very alone, no community, like a, a undiscovered planet. And every body in the crowd are, are these stars that my gravity can't reach. It's like you're all part of a cosmic inside joke and are laughing around me. If only you knew how important I was, what I did. Like I actually invented the legal marriage between G.I. Joes and Cabbage Patch dolls. True story. And also, I also invented dreaming about being an astronaut, a, a poet, a, a movie star, an NBA star, and a spy all in the same dream. I invented all of that. Still, I find myself searching for something for someone, I'm looking on the internet, I'm looking at social media, I'm looking for something, for someone. Someone once told me that I am the I in community. But more often than not, I feel like the space in between the letters, the distance between doing well and barely holding on. So I, I say to myself, you gotta change that mentality. 
rethink belonging. We belong to one another, but so many of us are scared to say the words. Even more of us are scared to take that first step. It's like community is this long-term relationship and we're not ready for that type of commitment. It's like we're scared of this type of marriage. It's like we believe that another city with a sexier body or, or sexier homeless folk is gonna come on and steal our hearts. I say rethink believing. Like, it's okay to believe that the word home refers to more than just the four walls within your reach. Reach out and touch yeah. someone, anybody in your community twice, appropriately, but touch them <laughs> twice and then come back and tell me about it. That is community, talking stories in person. Instead, we have become pixelated partners. Tell me, what frequency must I become to connect with you? I say, rethink becoming. Like when I was a little kid and it was just me and my mom and I had to become something different when I couldn't feel the, the, the warmth of the sun on my back or the, the touch and kindness of someone else on my skin. I, I guess I'm really trying to say is, is I'm ready to be a part of your community if you'll have me. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is there is an I in community and there's a you in there too so maybe you and I can get together and believe in things again, to become things again to belong to things again beautifully like when we were children. And maybe then, maybe then, we can tell the next generation with no hesitation that we on this street corner, we invented community. True story. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing a little bit on, on, on community here. And uh, one of the most important things about community is family. And, and it's funny because, especially I think here in California where all of us are kinda, in San Diego, we're implanted. So then we start to have our actual family and then the family that we choose. You know, uh, most of you, I would say, 75% of you look like you come from very functional homes. This may, that poem may not be for you. Uh, and my, poem, my, poem, my, my home was a little bit dysfunctional. So I want to tell you a little bit about my family before we continue on. So my, my grandfather's pancreas had poems in them. Passed it on to my father who professed he had no passion to become a page or a prophet. He presented the proposition to me. Now I went on a pilgrimage to the Middle East. I came back so black I was damn near purple, y'all. Passed through the sun and out pops a poet. I'm probably not what you expected. Perhaps if I had a pimp's tongue, I could pull the appreciation out of you. Yeah, I may have a bit of an attitude. I may be quiet when you're here, but I ain't afraid of you. When you leave, I'll be talking again. My grandmother on my mother's side used to laugh when no one was looking. She was a thug for Jesus when church folks gathered, and she always carried a purse full of candy and condoms. Okay, I'm lying about the last part. I'm lying. One thing my grandma knew how to do was make beautiful babies. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? Hey, that's my grandma you're talking about. All about her children when my aunt, her daughter, bride of, died of a broken heart. It's a true story. She also allowed herself to pass through the ether, stating, and I quote, she didn't need to be all alone up there in heaven, as if God's cheese, eggs, and grits wasn't as good as hers, as if nobody, not even sweet baby Jesus, could love my auntie the way that she could. See, her love was hard, like skin pulled on drums with beep, 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 that butt, if not moving to a rhythm. Believe me, I was a bad kid. I felt it a lot. Her other daughter, my mother, loves fierce like wind through horns. Rocky, play with me. Uh, An organized chaos like jazz. My love, my love is loud, young, requesting service, needing of attention. I don't know how to love that hard or that fierce yet in my community. On holidays like this, I find myself reaching for my phone, but I'm more concerned with your status, my status. I keep my family at arm's length with my heart high upon my sleeve, so my, my, my family and my heart become something that I can see, but I never let them quite reach me. Just trying to learn how to play this game. And 30 plus years in life, the same question still remains. You guys seem like you're smart out here. Maybe you could tell me, how much do you have to love someone? Just because it's not a poem of answers. Shoot, I don't even know if I have the right questions. You ask the same person on a different day, they will tell you family is either a curse or a blessing, right? Sometimes I see people introduce their family through the filter of failures. Have you ever seen that before? Like, oh, that's my cousin Tony over there. He just got out of jail, so hide your purse, sister. Hide your purse. Oh, and that's Victor. He just got a six-month chip. We praying for him. We praying for his sobriety. Oh, and then Vanessa's badass kids. They don't know who they daddy is. In this, our urban village, 
surrounded by a concrete jungle. Family trees get ripped apart in the name of progression. It's like a sacrifice to the god of possessions. Tell me, what leaf is so arrogant to call another leaf damaged when we're all held from the same limb, right? We're all kissed from the same sun, right? We're all coming from the same roots. Eventually, we all fail, all fall. That's family, a mosaic. You guys know what a mosaic is, right? There's those jagged, broken pieces that are only beautiful when you put them together and they're exposed by light. So I attend one of my sister's events and she shines and I'm proud. I, I call up my mother and she lights up as a poet, as a DJ, as a playwright. I try so hard to be a star, to illuminate, when I learn that sometimes I just need to shut the hell up and be someone else's light switch. I wish, I wish that love was given easily like jealousy or resentment. I wish every time I was jealous or resentful, I understood that it was only out of a lack of my own self-love. But this is not a poem of answers. Like I told you, I don't even know if I have the right questions. All I know, all I know, San Diego, is that I have a family, I have a community, and the pain that comes with them, and the love that comes from them, be it ever so dysfunctional, there is no place like home. I'm gonna do uh, two more quick ones and then I'm gonna get out of your hair. You guys good so far? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, uh, Rocky, uh, Diego, uh, hit me up. Let's, let me, let's do something. I'm waiting on you, you guys start. I brought some of the best people I know, so. Yeah, yeah. Listen. We are our own beautiful, and we're our own obstacle, right? We're like the bastard children of Marilyn Monroe and Miles Davis. Someone forgot to tell our parents there's no need to go outside for amazing. We are our own incredible. We've been taught the word vision incorrectly. Brookstone does not make the gadget that allows you to see the light behind your eyelids. Every time I open them, it's this world that leaves us blinded. A homeless man right here on the street showed me his broken smile and his signage. I'm embarrassed. It takes cardboard and liquored breath to remind me of my kindness. I often walk when flying is always an option. In the store, insecurity is always on sale, right? So often I ignore the cans of courage. Check your mail. You will always get the life your thoughts subscribe to. If at this moment you're feeling lost, San Diego, I, I know the feeling. Join me or I will find you. We'll be both truth and contradiction. We'll dub ourselves the lonely army. War is always internal. Death is a make-believe word written inside the devil's journal. Oof. I have no magic tricks except that I am breathing. If you want special effects beyond that, you may be looking for poetry, Disney. <laughs> I am simply complicated. I am hope exaggerated. I am God's love animated. I am humble. I am an a-hole leader of my own world. Welcome to my story on this street corner. I'm glad you made it. Who am I in your story? Better question, are you living an adventure or is your drama boring? Understand you cannot both fight for the people and fight for your own glory. You, a lot of people are serving eight different masters and none of them like you. They will show a commercial for Jenny Craig right after the one from Carl's Jr. just to spite you. I'm yelling because I have so much inside of me. Why aren't you saying anything? Your silence is scaring me. Seriously, your silence is making me afraid. Really? Are you waiting for the future today? Thank you. Are you waiting for the future to change? Y'all, the future is always one day away and tonight we have so much work to do. Promise you you'll be beautiful tomorrow afternoon. Resist the urge to be ordinary, to dream ordinary. There is nothing, nothing, nothing on TV more valuable than living. Fix something that needs healing. Even if you start with yourself. Let me rewind that. Fix something that needs healing, especially if you have to start with yourself. I know a lot of people vote for their favorite American Idol. I'm calling on you, sister. I'm calling on you, brother. I'm calling on you, sister, because a lot of good people need good help. This is your community. Listen, I was watching this YouTube video the other day, and it was called How to Disappear in America. You can look it up. And it was speaking about people who unsuccessfully tried to fake their own death. And I realized the same title can easily be applied to people who exist sitting through their life, afraid to get up and live. Keep living, keep fighting, we love you.
my other people and if you like what I do you're gonna love what they do because uh, my, my mutant ability is is finding people more talented than I and bringing them together all right all right um, uh, Rocky and Diego something 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 that 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 will make them fall in love back with themselves <laughs> we, I'm, t I'm speaking in musician so just bear with me something that'll they'll make them fall back in love with themselves I love their community. Give me something like that. With a twist of line. And a little bit of whiskey because, you know, sometimes you need a party. I believe in joy. Anyone else believe in joy? I believe in joy like, like my mother believes that prayer is the strongest armor a person can put on. Like my son believes that I am literally the strongest human, pe per, uh, human being on this planet and I don't correct them. Like my wife strongly believes that there are always chores that can be done even on a Sunday. I believe joy is inherent but easy to unlearn. I believe joy is inherent but unrecognizable in an Instagram lineup. I believe joy is inherently a part of us but gets diluted when we make decisions that keep us isolated from our community, apart from us. I believe joy is analog and not digital. I believe it's all natural and not manufactured. And this is more of an opinion than a fact, but I, I kind of believe Joy doesn't visit Florida very much. I'm just saying. I'm just watching the news. This, this is what I see. I believe Joy, real Joy, is perspective. And it is believing that everything, I'm talking everything, is for your benefit. Even the pain, especially the pain. I believe Joy is a horizon, and it is always beautiful and distant when you look outside of yourself for it, until the moment you look down and recognize that you are a part of that same sunset, and that someone else is out there looking at you and your accomplishments, both of you, silhouettes in your own pink and purple dust, saying, I want what they have, there is my joy. I believe, collectively, we all have this Gotham complex, and we're waiting for someone to come and save us, but that is not the place where joy lives. Ask my two-year-old son, he will tell you, I know Batman personally, and Batman told me the joy is in the rescuing. Do not be ashamed of that. You know, the giving of the gift is beautiful, but the real joy is, it, uh, the receiving of the gift is beautiful. You can give me gifts all day, but the, the, the real joy is the giving of the gifts. That is how we are made. That is why we call children God's gift. Yeah. The, the, the ability to serve serves our spirit more than you can ever imagine. I mean, let's be honest, children are the most whiniest, clingiest, most destructive things on this planet. And that's when they're still cute before puberty. But we love them because all we can do is give into them, pour onto them. Ironically, by placing the joy outside of ourself, it gets poured back within. I don't know how that works. It must be magic, but I believe in magic. I believe in joy. I believe I was meant to uh, spit this poem on this street corner and that all of you are a part of my tribe. I believe I needed to write this poem because I desperately needed to hear it because I keep looking for joy in all the places I know it will not be. Curse you, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. I believe, so here we are. Silhouettes, I can barely see you guys because of the light. Silhouettes in our own pink and purple dust. And I know for some of you, your sky is bright yellowish blue. And some of you, you're right in the middle of your life's afternoon. And far in the distance, imagine, far in the distance are the people and all the successes that you covet so desperately. And in between that, what you covet, what you want, and where you are now is the reason why you were put on this earth. In between that are the people that you were meant to serve. On the way to your sunset, do not forget to look in the dust in the corners where the light cannot quite reach. Believe it or not, that is where your joy is. In your communities, just waiting for you to find it and love it. There's joy. Isn't it so beautiful to know that joy was never out there? It's always been here, waiting for you. Thank you, guys.
answered all the questions. That's, that's, that's what I tried to do. Um, I want to bring up someone uh, that I just met, but I, already I am so impressed with her. I, I, I tried to look up her bio, and then IMDb came up, and a long list of credits came up. Uh, she's a HBO Def Jam poet. She has been in movies and TV. Um, uh, just an amazing, um, besides her accomplishments, I actually, I, I listened to her poems and I started getting her out to some gigs and I, I heard her and the way she affected people. And I can't believe that I get to share the stage with this young everybody. Time for Gil Sotu. Yeah. So we're here to talk about community and tolerance. Uh, tolerance. I was explaining to because I used to be um, a diversity educator, um, and we spoke of tolerance. But I always wondered, what exactly does that mean? Do I need to tolerate your culture? Or do I need to accept your culture? Do I need to see? Or no, I, do I need to celebrate your femininity? Yeah, 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 celebrate. Do I need to tolerate what's happening in my community? Or do I need to participate, participate. in lifting it up? Yeah. Participate. People ask me a lot of times uh, the question, what are you? because they see a, a, an outside. A glow. Thank you, sister. <laughs> my name is Bridget Gray. But Gray was just a name that I inherited from my mother's second husband. See, this is a coincidence that I am a mixture of black. Treasure every shade in between the two. I get tired of people asking me. Mixed burrito. What are you? I'm mixed burrito. Are you half and half? <laughs> mixed burrito. Well. Yes, I am. I am half sunshine, half cloud of gloom, but always notice when I enter a room, half jazz, half blues, half deep house, half old school groove, half you passive, half protest, old half school. moving on, half in regress, half sinner, half repentful, half grateful, half resentful, half friend, half foe, half virgin, half hoe, half realist, half dreamer, half Cosmo, half schemer, half ebony, half grace, half body, half face. Half the time I'm screaming, half the time I'm shaking, the other half I'm faking. Half growing, half shrinking, half a but I'm always, always thinking. Why does it seem like a necessity for people to try and define me? Not by my characteristics, but by my racial statistics. What are you mixed with? How do you identify? Do you mean what color do I deny? Because if I had to pick just one color, I guess I'd say gray. But gray is just a name that I inherited from my mother's second husband. It is a coincidence that I am a mixture of black and white. And although I treasure every shade in between the two, I get tired of people asking me, what are you? Well, if you really want to know, if you really want to know my colors, fine. I am Illuminating tones that are blinding you, letting cause you to stop, pause, and rewind as you try to find me. I radiate heat like the deep blue core of a flame, and I never seem to reflect any two colors just the same. My nuances of yellow are sometimes mellow and sometimes brighter than the part of the sun that you can't bear to look at. Some days I can't bear to look at my tarnished past, then I gasp. Take a deep breath and dance lightly across every hue of the love I once knew. Some days I be an orange moon like Erica Badu, and I still haven't hit all my best attributes. I'm the passionate pink that will make you think about the variation of pigments inside this poetry. And don't be fooled by what you see. Swirl somewhere between the pretty burgundy and green is a mean streak that you would not believe. But that is a discolored breast that must be provoked to be seen, because I tend to lean more towards my indigo purity that's playful and flirty to paint over my insecurities. I create my own palette of watercolors from an erratic prismatic rainbow that stretches all the way from Mars to Venus so the universe can glow by my iridescent complex complexion. I 
mere reflections that destroy perceptions. I'm only made up of two halves. So, if you look at me and see half black, half white, half the absence of color, half the absence of light, you're half wrong and half right. I'm half midnight, half shooting star blazing. Half of what y'all think of me on this street corner deeply affects me. But the other half doesn't phase me. Because I'm half Amazon. Half amazing. What are you? Well, what are you? people here love women? Yeah. I love women. How many people love empowering women? Yes. Yes. Okay, so then this poem is for everybody. Occasionally I'll have um, men come up to me and they will say, um, what's that poem about? What do you love? Like, why is it so um, you know, anti-male? And I have to say, this is not an anti-male poem. This is a pro-woman poem. Huh. If you are pro-woman, then you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> I am a woman. Uh -huh. And I can be compassionate, gentle, loving, and uh -huh. sweet. But I can go from zero to witch in less than 10 seconds. Spin your head around so fast you'll be stunned. Keep ah. in mind, this poem has just begun. See, good. I embrace all of my masculine and feminine Woo! traits, and I accept the fact that there are those who will hate on me simply because I don't act like their version of a lady, but I don't care. I tell dirty jokes, and sometimes I swear. And that doesn't mean I'm any less of a queen. Born one day before Martin Luther King, and like him, my Capricorn Number convictions force queen. me to fight for what Number I believe in. One, and as the good doctor says, Violence never wins. So I don't arm myself with a weapon, but I do load and cock my tongue and shoot my mouth off like a gun. In semi-automatic under the utterances that bear symbiosis in my words. And when I step up to a mic, sister, I deserve to be heard. Yeah. Because I am a woman. Yes. And I too have a dream that one day I will fill arenas without football teams. No, I will use my poetry to move the masses. And you'll have to go long to catch my verbal passes. And I'll have male cheerleaders shaking their asses. And the crowds will go spastic while I spit stuff so deep their thoughts drip like molasses for hours after I speak. And when I am done, I'll have destroyed any misconceptions that women are weak. But until that day comes, I continue to seek for a man to meet my emotional and my intellectual needs. I continue to write with the intent to feed. I do my best to plant conscious seeds in people's minds. I recognize I'm a female way ahead of my time, and in a male-dominated society, I will still shine, yeah, yeah, despite yeah. the fact that I am woman. I am loud and I am showing, because I have been given a voice. I respect the views of pro-life, but I am pro-choice. And that doesn't mean I don't value the potential to carry the next leader in my womb, but until a man can give birth, I believe it's a woman's right to choose. Yeah. I may be soft oh, to touch, but I am hard to fool. I use my femininity as a practical tool. Bat my lashes and make the coolest man drool. So you are not to create a mood with just a look. Then I will pickpocket your heart before you even know you've been took. And believe it or not, I have no desire to ever learn how to cook. But I am indeed a woman. And I can bring home the bacon, but I'll have a man fried up in the pan because I don't let gender roles define who I am. I am confident and competitive. I have big feet and walk like I have balls, but make no mistakes when I step up to a mic, what you hear is my ovaries clang. You'll rarely see me in a dress because it just ain't my thing. But I do dare to wear her, he, wife beater tees and I do so sometimes braless because I like to show up the fact that I have been so blessed with the ability to nurture generations of life with the milk from my breast can take away all your worries just lay your head on my chest mommy is here three words that can erase the strongest man's fears 
and brothers, my beloved brothers, there's nothing wrong with shedding a few tears. It does not negate your strength, but please don't underestimate my gifts because I have power in between these hips and I don't make them twist in ways that will have you singing my praise for days. <laughs> but sometimes I just want a nuts. And so what? So I'm sexual. I'm unashamed. I'm not a wild animal that needs to be tamed. Yeah. I am a woman, and I know this, because both of my lips part gently like Moses part of the Red Sea, and just because I am comfortable inside my sexuality does not mean at the club you should feel free to reach out and put hands on me. And always, always respect the word no, even if you think it's in the last minute, my body's a temple, and unless I allow you to enter up in it, you cannot penetrate my world. Come on. Don't call me a baby, because I ain't a little girl. I'm a woman, I'm a deity, I am a sanctuary, I am the earth and the sky, I am the answer to the questions why, I am the conscience and the subconscious minds intertwined, I'm what you feel right now on the street corner, tingling in your spine, I am truth hymns inside things like this, instant speakeasy churches, I am the end to all of your searches. I am arrogant and unapologetic. I am confident and competitive. I have big feet. <laughs> Size 11. 11. You read about that, sister. You read about that. And I walk like I have balls, but make no mistakes. I'm spiritual. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am your equal. And I am indeed every inch of me. Woman. Woman. Yes! Yes! That was beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so. Yeah, this is amazing. This is, it's unique and interesting and guerrilla style and community. And I appreciate every single person uh, here giving us a voice and giving yeah. us a chance to share. Ask me a question. Something to inspire me, how about that? something new it's about alchemy y'all know what alchemy is yes. well, in the scientific sense it's transmuting a base metal into gold in a community sense it's transmuting what we have around us and turning it into art some physics is it's also a science but more of a metaphysical science it's energy and magnitude to frequency of radiation and it represents change kind of like alchemy it's deep in the middle of the night as I sit down and try to write so I can let in some light. With a quantum quickness, I don't want to miss this lesson, so I will start with this confession to this. Oh, I am in the process of transmuting base metal into gold. I've been watching my spirit.
like your feet, they're for dancing. And air is for breathing like hearts, they're for romancing. So I'm gonna dwell in love so my thoughts can do the enhancing. And I choose to choose them wisely. Deep in the middle of the night as I'm trying to write this all down so I won't forget. I gotta use this magic for good. Yeah. Tune my frequency into peace. Have patience with these demons and love all my enemies. Most importantly, myself. Come on. So when I look at my mistakes directly in the face, I will love them anyway. Yeah. Because guilt is useless and growth is beautiful. Realign yourself ever so slightly and you just might see we are all the same, simply projecting and reflecting our own realities. So please, jump in, because now is the perfect moment to shine your gift. Now is the perfect moment to make that shift. We are in the midst of a quantum quickness. You get to decide chaos or bliss. Are you going to go through the motions of your life, or are you going to be an alchemist? No need for stressing. Find the blessing right here in the present. Redirect your energy. Tune into the frequency. Give it up for Bridget Gray one time. And for all you earth conscious people, you see she picked up the paper. That was just for dramatic effect. She was not littering. Four minutes left. We're just gonna have one last poet. And he's one of my favorite poets in San Diego. Just so you guys know, there is poetry competitions called slams. And uh, San Diego has its own slam team. Everybody in America. It was like two years ago, right? Uh, and uh, he's an amazing poet. He's a teacher educator uh he goes into different communities and and just uh, uh gives up his time and his passion so he does this for pay and not for pay uh i love this man little man big heart please give it up for viet my everybody Woo! Woo! I chose to live. I was tired of dying, so I climbed off my deathbed, jumped into enemy territory, dove into the belly of the beast, and I drank its poison. So when I came out, I was stronger with the antidote to save even those before me. And now, memories of the legacies are restored as my voice slays dragons that have us dragging our feet through the streets of Babylon. I became the change I saw in this dream I had that one yeah. day we would all be free at last. See, at first, I thought I was living the dream, but I was actually stuck in a nightmare when my own dream, when my own blood drowned out the sound of my mind's heart and I knew I had to wake up by any means necessary. When I awoke, I murdered my thoughts, and then I resurrected them to seek redemption. I no longer wanted to be driven insane by daily reminders of being a pawn. I took a crash course. I'm becoming a kamikaze warrior. I became a courier, carrying weapons to take down the structures of corruption. Yeah. I am a pilot, driven by my origin, so I piloted my destination right into the origin in order to take out the axis, but I'm alive now more than ever. I refuse Woo. to die, so don't kill me. I'm just a messenger, a white pigeon. You can hear me crying when my voice is delivered through bottles, drink my message, it contains solutions to many battles, pour out libations for someone who has passed or is dead but doesn't know it, I'm alive because I chose it, and I choose to be active in this passive matrix, and I seek neo souls who also select the nose, so forget bliss, Woo! ignorant people are dying, I'm trying to lift up those who are lying asleep, awake them from those who are lying deceitful, I'm exhausted by false promises of being equal, so I'm running full speed to confront the culprit, bum rush in the pulpit, yeah. spreading messages of human existence, like a plague that doesn't discriminate to incriminate me, judge me and imprison me, accuse me of running outside of my race, brand me a disgrace, I'll be it, but excuse me if I break out and spread culture, cause the world is my petri dish, I invest growth, and the same monstrous institution that raised me, to consume the poison that was killing me softly, but now I die hard with the vengeance, do my time with a sentence, stanza by stanza so the beast won't stand a chance against thousands of soldiers just like me, taught in their own home schools and publicly spreading the contagious message of life, you see I'm done being held captive by capitalism prison so yeah. I made the decision to do a lifetime of community service and free the minds of the dying so rest in peace rest in peace rest in peace but awake in rage yeah. my name is Viet 
Mai, welcome. Woo! Yes. How are you guys yeah. doing tonight? Happy Woo. holidays. Yeah. Happy holidays. As Gil said, I'm an educator uh, and a poet. So I do a lot of speaking engagements, workshops, trainings, uh, and uh, across my uh, work, uh, this poem is uh, trying to move people from passion to compassion. How's that? Nice. So we're gonna close out this last segment with the theme of compassion. Y'all ready, say let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> so a lot of people ask me, hey Viet, what do you do? And I used to tell them, well, I teach math. But since that didn't quite sum it up, all up, I also add that I, I don't just teach math, I teach problem solving. Effect and what's causing it, logic, probability, like what are the chances that blacks and Latins get educated? Probably doesn't stand a chance to get incarcerated. Stats, but not accurate. I took wow. one class and that was it. Optimization was broken down into two, three courses. 101A, B, and C, like the efficiency of education, medication, and world peace, geometry, and measurement. Figuring out what shapes and sizes fit in our domain and range of how high you can up the wire axis and how low you will go before you hit the negatives, the algebra. What the heck is X and why is dad over there? What's missing? Yeah. Yeah. What are we trying to find? Well, I'm just trying to get paid, but there's not enough information given these days. So when equalities obviously only go one way, so are you less than or equals to? Are you making money or linearly? And I was work for an hour's wage or exponentially because I just put another K in my 401k. So I say functions are just like parties. The more we put into one, the more we get out of it. But the inverse can also be true. You just got to know the right formula. But don't, don't heat it up too hot or you might burn the baby's tongue off. You see, how does a mother go to school and work at the age of 16? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, don't know why she's scared. You gotta find that root canal is split into two unequal parts, but no health insurance is gonna make that problem kind of hard. Stuff like fractions, decimals, percents are tricky because the more oppressed yeah. people you have in the denominator is actually worth less of a whole. Uh, como se dice decimal point in Espanol? <laughs> Wait, what'd you call me? <laughs> oh, punto. Mueve el punto de derecha si tienes más, si tienes izquierda, si tienes menos. Entiendes, mendes, you see fractions, but just like division problems and division is just the opposite of multiplication. Being divided Come on. doesn't produce anything. Because yeah. it's a quotient, yeah. not a product.